Hey everybody, this is a new episode of Building My 90 Gallon Reef. As you can see, I'm playing around with my Neptune Apex controller. Got a few things going on here. A um, few things are not looking like I really particularly want them to look. Um, but right now it's just in the, the tanks in a cycle at the moment and we're still working things out making sure that everything's working as intended um, cycles almost done ammonia is dropping rapid rapidly nitrates are rising uh, nitrites are uh, sitting around two parts per million so test again in a few days see where we're at uh, you can of course see the uh, tank it's definitely not over that shoulder over this shoulder <laughs> um, but going uh, going through the apex fusion here the water level is a little wonky I installed auto top off today um, and noticed that when my hose was somewhat low it created a siphon from the Tunzi osmolator and so it was slowly draining and so it, it rose a lot higher than I wanted it to so I had thought I had got that fixed and then the siphon had started again um, and got it up to 6.3 inches. Um, I've moved the, since moved the hose and haven't seen the problem come back. Um, have the auto top off reservoir pretty low so in the event it did siphon the rest out it wouldn't uh, be too detrimental. Um, Right now, the only thing plugged into this is an old um, energy bar eight. Only thing plugged into that is the auto top off, and um, it will turn on when the water level gets lower. And I can show that here um, by going down to the ATO and looking at the programming. Um, didn't like how the ATO configuration was set up because it wouldn't let me use my water level sensor. So what I have it set to, of course, is um, off off. And then if the water level, um, that's the name of the sensor, um, is less than 4.9 inches, then turn the socket on and if the water level is greater than 5.1 inches then turn it off that's just an extra layer of protection for myself so that it doesn't turn on and stay on due to some bug or some glitch or anything of that nature um, of course there is a float valve um, in the return chamber that is doing the rest um, most of the heavy lifting this is just a safety feature for myself so we go, uh, we're looking at ORP. It's a brand new tank in the cycle. It means a whole lot of nothing. Um, the reason we're seeing this huge spike in pH is because I've had my skimmer off for a little while as I was dosing um, Microbacter 7 during the cycle. I've since turned the skimmer on. And, of course, you see that pH raised to much better numbers. And uh, temperature, of course, we have this probe... Um, or this, the socket that connects to my Inkbird he heater controller. So again, we have redundancy so that the heaters don't run wild. Um, we have the, in, in case it gets too warm, we have the ability to automatically shut off the heater controller, which uh, it does occasionally. Um, I want my heater controller to do the majority of the on off. So I might need to tweak the apex a little bit. Um, because it's much cheaper to replace an Inkbird heater controller than it is uh, an energy bar. So, um, of course, we have our optical leak detector. Um, if that closes up, many other things happen. Um, shuts off a lot of things. Um, the the Apex Pro that I have is um, has the built-in fluid monitoring module um, so plugged into that of course is the water level sensor um, I'm, I'll be much happier when this drops down into the five inch range 
um, and I can start truly testing, make sure that my settings are working accurately for my auto top off and that we're not diluting with too much RODI. But right now, I've got both my lights off, my refugium light off. They'll remain off until the cycle's complete. Um, not using any of the DC connections right now, even though I do have a DC pump on the skimmer, uh, Reef Octopus, and a uh, Reef Octopus um, for, for my return. Um, I could use the DC connections, but I'm not ready to do that just yet. I um, have a whole lot of empty spots on my Energy Bar 8. I imagine there will eventually be one or two things plugged into that. Um, in addition to the auto top off um, for various reactors if necessary. I'm not just going to arbitrarily plug in reactors and, and configure reactors unless I need them. Um, we're drawing not much power, but my wife's 210 gallon, which is also on an Apex. Um, I'm, I am a little concerned about the 15 amp circuit. Both are on, uh, especially in the winter when the basement down here gets a little bit chilly. So we'll see what, uh, what happens in the winter. I do have a backup plan in the event that we pop breakers. Um, but, uh, really like how you can kind of go through here and look at the, the various things I like to I'm gonna keep an eye on the amperage draw. You can see when the heater turns on, that's the that's the primary amperage draw. And look in here and see everything that is going on. I will say that um, one of the most challenging problems I've had with the Apex is installing the fluid level sensor. Um, it was not as straightforward as one would think. Um, once you realize that you have to tell the system what is plugged into that port before you can set it up um, and that it does not auto detect, things get significantly easier for you. Um, it was just, it was not as um, user friendly as I may have, as I had hoped. Of course, I log all of my tests um, using, uh, using this. Uh, I wish it had more. Uh, I have to do other for things like salinity. I have to do other for nitrite. I have to do other for ammonia. Um, I wish it did have other um, quick. But what I do like about it is as long as you name it the same thing every time when you go look in your measurement log, um, I've called it ammonia every time, and you can see all my tests that I've manually logged under ammonia, and we're currently sitting at 0 0.59 parts per million ammonia. Um, and then, of course, you see the nitrates. Um, I learned an interesting fact about nitrate tests today. If you have nitrites present, they can wildly throw off your nitrate test. Um, so I'm not going to test nitrates again until I'm reading undetectable nitrites. Um, nitrites, I'm right now I'm only testing with an API kit, so they're not quite accurate. I, I will believe it, though, when um, they do read zero. I'll probably end up ordering a Red Sea kit um, to, to uh, do the majority of my testing um, going forward. And uh, salinity, I was having some interesting salinity challenges. I think um, I, I'm getting disparate readings between my um, refractometer and my um, HANA salinity test. I calibrated both. Um, I, I trust the optical refractometer more. Um, I zeroed that out with RODI. Um, and then tested it, and um, when I tested with that, that was uh, when I when I hit um, 1.023. Um, so it does need a, the salinity is lower than I'd prefer. Um, working on getting that up slowly but surely. Um, but really like how this can log all of your uh, tests, and you can log any tests you want because it allows that freeform input. You're not um, 
don't have to use exclusively what they have pre-built. So what's being controlled, you can see we are, uh, looks like we are actively heating right now, um, which is interesting. Um, ah, because it doesn't, uh, sorry, the outlet doesn't turn off until um, it reaches uh, higher, higher than that, in which case it will, uh, it'll turn off. Like I said, the ink bird handles most of the, uh, most of the on off. Cause yeah, if you're switching the EB on and off, you have just more wear and tear. Um, and yet yeah, got my MP forties. Now I do have the Mobius control module. Um, I have not hooked it into this tank because I have found that it is lacking in features over the Mobius app. I have the MXM module on my wife's um, freshwater tank. She's a 210 gallon. We have a couple of AI Neros on there and an AI blade freshwater light. And um, I'm noticing a lack of controllability as compared with the Mobius app. So I have not put that on there. I'm hoping there's an update or some um, to bring feature parity between the MXM and um, and the Mobius app. So that's that's not there yet. Um, looking into this a little bit further, you can see what I do have in the installed the fluid uh, monitoring module that ships with the Pro four ports on it, um, built right into the the base unit. Uh, got the EB832, that's the new one, um, and then the EB84, um, that's the old legacy black ones. Um, and then I do like having that little orange display that you can see right there on my tank, just a quick glance of uh, pH, etc. Um, the one thing that you'll notice that I'm not measuring that I want to measure, but no one seems to have a salinity probe in stock. I, I want to throw a salinity probe on here. Um, just to have that um, in there as well. Uh, one of the projects I'm working on is uh, with a very small form factor uh, machine that I bought. It is right here. Um, I'm going to be installing Linux on here and then installing a um, Cribble worker, which will then grab from the API the Apex API, which you can't grab from their website um, in the cloud, unfortunately. You have to grab data directly from your box itself um, locally on the network. And I don't want to deal with dynamic DNS and things like that. So I'll be pulling from the REST API, um, taking all that data, all the sensor data, um, input, output data, readings, etc., and shipping it up to uh, Cribble cloud and uh, putting it in Cribble Lake and then searching it with Cribble Search um, and, and building some really interesting dashboards and I hope to do some data correlation and things of that nature, um, especially um, when I start adding uh, additional notes and, um, you know, what's good, what's working well, um, correlating that to what the parameters were at the time what the test measurements were at the time, what's, and then when things are not going really well, correlating that with additional um, parameters, um, when there's fish or coral death, um, et cetera. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how I can correlate the data um, using advanced searching capabilities. Um, and uh, I'll show that off once I have some data and I have that built. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm a, I'm a data nerd, so that's what you get. But uh, going through this Apex journey here, I'm by no means an expert. But um, if you do need help configuring your Apex and, and getting it doing the things you want it to do, um, let me know. I'd love to help. So that's all I got for now. If there's anything you'd like to see me chat about or any features within the Apex, because there's a lot. And I, like I said, I'm not an expert on, on it. I'm not an expert on all of them, but I'd be happy to go over some things. If you're considering getting an Apex, let's chat.
That's all for tonight. Thank you all. Later.